Oh no, oh, and it's backing in that. Ooh, of course, snipe. Wrong button, and now everything is showing up. Don't want this. Well, you just saw my face. Next ship is pretty good. Starting us off. All these slower ships. All right, so it's okay. That is a really angry brick. All right, let's start qualification match number 34. And who do we have in this match? Alrighty, on the Red Alliance, we've got interesting Grenby Runner. And on the Blue Alliance, we have Unstable Mayfly, Velatica, and Qenful Conqueror. All right, let's get this match off the ground. Starting us off on the Red Alliance, huge amounts of Big Bang Fire go towards Q Anvil Conqueror. No lives lost at this point. Big chunks. Oh, Blue Alliance for the first loss. Velatica could get off a burst here. Just... What the hell killed me? Velatica getting destroyed by missiles from the ships of the Broad Breath faction. Very dangerous. Damn it. Mayfly is the only Blue Alliance left. Takes a kill though. Just about hovering around though. That that um, antimatter burst is dangerous. Looks like it could pull this back, but it's also just as much in risk of dying as it is killing. I don't know. I think Runner's gonna have a hard time getting through that many shields. That's, that's true. Yeah, this the the, the both, both Big Bang ships in this thing right now are f firing at each other with a bunch of different weapons. Note that Runner has longer range but less weapons. Getting like stricken Runner by. Is, Runner is getting uh, hit here pretty badly, but it's giving its ally time to recover. Oh, and Runner is destroyed by a well timed shot of antimatter from Mayfly. This is Grenby, correct? Yep, Grenby on the red line. Other around the border. Grenby. These are B drones. It would only take one hit from unstable. Is that the new this shit? This is uh, unstable Mayfly and Grenby. You know, if that was a certain other ship, that was it. That just totally died. And thrusters getting taken off of Grenby by antimatters from Splinter, and the Blue Alliance takes the match on destruction. All right, now, after that match, let's take a look at our ranks. Oops, wrong buttons. Interesting ranking down, runner ranking down, and Unsealed May Mayfly moving up into a picking position. Congratulations, Splinter. And Vladika is now at rank 30. Wow. Yeah, that's I probably, was that five ranking points? For the, um, five ranking points were given to Unstable Mayfly, who got yeah, as many as possible, which is pretty cool. But yeah, well, let's take a look at the what happened during that match. Over to you, Kaboom. All right, so immediately we see the danger of Big Bang, just Q and Vol Conqueror getting absolutely obliterated. But what's important to note here is Velatica. It doesn't have point defense, which is it something does. to consider when picking uh, alliance partner. It does. Okay. Yeah, I actually did see it uh, take out a few missiles. Not quite enough. Whereas Mayfly actually has a suitable amount of point defense to deal with those missiles. That's why it survived so long and pulled off the kill. Further, its firing pattern is just slightly off, which makes it hard for dodgy ships like Runner to get away, making it really good at killing other Big Bang faction. That's that's really what came in clutch was unstable Mayfly in this match. Yeah, well, that, yeah, it's interesting. I I think I see it that way as well. All right, thank you, Kaboom. Now it's back to the next match. And who do we have in qualification match number thirty-five? On the Red Alliance, we have Schlager, Light Thrower, and Gotta Go Fast up against Blue Alliance with Helio, the Proton, and the Death of Milan. All right, well, let's get this match started. All right, starting us off the Red Alliance with their small ships. Ooh, Bursty faction Ooh. destroying a ship. Yeah, that's Helios gone. What was that you were saying about Bursty not being viable, Kaboom? Hmm? <laughs> Should all go running in and getting in some big gashes on that blue ship there. Looks like 
Let's not want to count. And a ton Milan destroying a ship by pulling it in with its dangerous lasers and hitting it with those characteristic Brad Sprawler's weapons. Gotta go fast, it's just running itself into the into that piece of debris for no reason. AI go burr. <laughs> now the debris around this thing is making it difficult for those other two ships to approach. Schlogger ran lands off a massive hit and it looks like it's shut until that ship's gone. Let's just see who gets the kill. Schlogger takes the kill. Looks like that's probably a rank up. And there we have it. Qualification match number 35. Now who... Who gets the points in that match? Yeah, indeed. Uh, Schlogger ranked up to rank number 3. <coughs> well, most other people, like God Go Fast and Light Thrower, also got some... some will maintain or increase their ranking score. The Blue Alliance all ranked down, sadly. All right, now, over to Kaboom for some insights on the match. All right, so immediately we see the power of Bursty, which I, I have to eat my words on. Um, but we also see Big Bang doing Big Bang things and just horrendously eviscerating thick ships. Brawlers are not immune to all forms of fire, as we can see in this match. And more importantly, we got an insight into kind of the rock, paper, scissors that is going on right now. Big Bang can certainly take out a distracted brawler, and Bursty can take out a Big Bang. It's going to be interesting to see what the Alliance picks are, considering this meta. Is the one consider one thing to consider with that is that there are more bursties than there are big bangs, and more big bangs. That we're not no, that's not. There are more there are more brawlers than there are big bangs. So having bursties is going to be more of a risk because even if bursty is good against big bang, there are still more brawlers to counteract that. So let's say you were just playing rock and rock paper scissors, but your opponent is 50% more likely to play paper. But I wouldn't say that's necessarily true because Alliance picks aren't random. They're very intentional. It would be good to have one of each and to get a good one of each. That's but what I'm saying. Is the enemy personal. is likely to be a brawler. Oh, well, you're a brawler than the big bang. I'm thinking. And some people may choose to bring two big bangs. There certainly are enough of them. Yeah, well, that's that's a little interesting. I'm excited to see what happens by the end of these qualifications in the ranking department. But yeah, thank you too for some insights on the match. Let's move back to the sheet and get ready for qualification match number 36. Who have we got? On the Red Alliance, we've got Brigator, Trongle, and Beams O Doom up against Blue Alliance's Instant Regret, Familiar Memories, and Weeblatron Soup. All right, well, let's get qualification match number 36 off the ground. Starting us off, Beams of Doom getting close to Guibalatron, and they have a little bit of a, uh, a little fight while, while the Red Alliance escapes. A small fender bender. The larger brick is moving in, dealing considerable damage to Excerpt's ship. Excerpt gets a great Gauss beam shot, though. Doesn't look like you can get through that armor though, and also looks like Weeblatron died off screen. Yeah, and but right now it looks like the Blue Alliance is hammering on the brick from skill with all of those missiles by familiar memories. Trongo's getting close. Trongo's approaching familiar memories slowly but surely using its characteristic weapons of multiple factions that you all know and love. Considering the last two ships on the Red Alliance, I find it pretty unlikely that this blue ship is caught. Doesn't look like it will be able to eat through all of that armor from Trongle and Brekutor, though. Note that the brick has forward thrust, and therefore when Familiar Memories gets in front of it, it might decide to charge in. Might become a wall. <laughs> <laughs> Trongo doesn't seem to be turning towards the, the familiar memories. Oh, I think it's happening. Ooh, a good, a good arena bounce there, though. There we go. And the looks like familiar memories is switching targets between both ships on the red lines.
Triangle thrust. Millie Memory's definitely. Millie Memory's definitely holding its ground, standing its ground there. Triangle almost getting within mortar range of the Blue Alliance. I think that's probably the only chance it's gonna get. Yeah, it looks like it. Those, but it's doing a very good job at point defending. Oh, burst things. of speed. Just about to by that. Like two charging bulls. Just missed. That that could have destroyed the alliance just instantly if they, if they had both clamped around familiar memories. But it looks like win they still win on points. All right, yeah, very nice. Has qualification match number 36. Now, how exactly did that change everyone's ranks after I checked to make sure the destruction log was all right? Um, oh no, I guess it wasn't. But yeah, all right, let's just go over to Kaboom for some insights on the match. What have you got for us? Yeah, so... <clears throat> Immediately, we see instant regrets re appeal to any Alliance captain. We we see Bursty's appeal. Popping ships that get too close, it's, it's what Bursty does best. Both Bursty faction ships immediately killed something. And without a Bursty ship, we saw those that missile kiter just run out the time versus these thicker brawling ships. Again, it reinforces that rock, paper, scissors kind of thing that we have going on right now. What's interesting is we have four factions, and we haven't seen a lot of the fourth faction. Maybe that could upset the meta. Yeah, interesting. Good insight, sir. And it looks like I wasn't correct on the destruction log. I just didn't realize that one ship didn't get destroyed. <laughs> All right, let me switch back to the match so that we can get ready for qualification for we'll just see see how people ranked after that match and so what um, happened slow king i would like I, I would like to briefly address slow king's comment that broad breath has no niche i would say that broad breath can fill any niche that's what it's really good thing. at it's kind of it's kind of a wild card because joyous's ship the trongle despite its ranking is actually really good no niche, only missiles. That's true. Well, I mean, like, <laughs> think about Broad Breath is Broad Breath sort of is outside of the rock, paper, scissors because it's just kind of the Jack Trades faction as it was designed to be, hence the name. It sort of could fulfill any niche that it wanted to. It could be fast, it could be it could be a kiter, it could be a brawler, it could be anything it really wanted. And that was the idea. Whereas Bursty, Big Bang, Brad's brawlers are all much more specialized. Yeah, that's, that's true, right? Broad Breath is made to be that broad faction. And I am going to say that missiles, missiles are one of the weapons that fill the most niches. They're very, very broad in their scope because they just kind of go towards the enemy and explode on them, which is good. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, I think we're ready for qualification match number 37. Who have we got? On the Red Alliance, we've got Interesting, Manted, and uh, ISINS up against Vladica, Hellfire, Barracuda, and Gamma Ray. All right, well, let's get this match started. On the Blue Alliance, charges in. Ooh, a oh huge amount of damage from Gamma Ray. Can't tell you got that kill there, but I'm-, I'm Gamma I, Ray I like firing close that. into the hull of that ship as well. Gamera is definitely bad. favorable in these bursty matchups with all of its armor. It's like a Manted and uh, ISI and AS uh, both died in the same pileup. Oh no, it's still there. Wait, <laughs> it's literally staring at it. This is awkward. All right, well, like, hey, we, have, uh, <laughs> we have we uh, have Hellfire Barracuda with the uh, the help out there, the assist. Huh, now that's a strange one, isn't it? I'm a little confused about what happened there, but yeah, there's qualification match number 37. Now, let's update our, our schedule and see. You gotta notice that Velatica did something there, Alliance captains. Alliance captains, please, please, please. <laughs> looks like someone is trying to get picked, but it looks like now Velatica does indeed have a higher rank than it did before at a rank of 29. But our highest ranked ship is still manted at a rank of 10. All right, so over to Kaboom for some more insights on the match. 
Yeah, so these matchups really show us just how deadly these small ship engagements can be, and it also shows us that Manted is kind of in a middle ground. It's, it's a mid-tier ship between being a heavy ship and being a light ship. It can take some punishment, but it can't take a lot, and those missiles are lethal to it. Missiles are lethal to big ships, as we've seen with uh, infamous Yen Yu's ship in the pre in the previous day's matchups. But if you have enough armor to tank a few hits, you might be able to make it through. Yeah, huh? You can also see Gamma Ray stealing well, Fanatica's kills there. The Alliance Captain's Fanatica could have done that on its own. Uh, that's where to go. <laughs> but yeah, there you go. Thanks for the insights on qualification match number 37. I guess it's time for qualification match number 38, and who have we got? On the Red Alliance, we've got Unstable Mayfly, More Hate Than Blood, and Schlager up against Teton Milan, Slow Zone, and Anti-X. Alright, well, let's get this match off the ground. I'm noting that there's a lot of high-ranked competitors this time. Wow, that's a huge HP pool on the Blue Alliance. And looks like Shlog is just... Ooh, no, scrape by. Just just about made it out. That was someone else, I think. Slow Zone yeah, pulling someone. Yeah, by Slow Zone. That's Brutal. Been there. Slow Zone doing his classic play. Looks like Shlog is the last one standing. Slow Zone already has four ranking points in this match if the match goes in favor of the Blue Alliance, which I don't think it is guaranteed to go if this Kiter manages to survive the whole thing. Which is slow. Schlogger can certainly oh, stand no. its ground under the right circumstances. Oh, it escapes the lasers. Again, 10 tinkle shields. The uh, lasers that pulled it in. Oh. First one that didn't pull it in. And slow zone goes in for the bite, pulling it in and just doing its thing. Wow, yeah, slow zone killing three ships that match, all three members of the other alliance. That's five ranking points. Incredible. Absolute monster. All right, well, let's. So, looking at what happened to the ranks here, all members of the Red Alliance moved down in rank, but Schlager is still at rank five, which is pretty good. And, well, you know, Detan Milan ranked up a bit. Anti X didn't really change its rank because it only got two ranking points. And Slow Zone maintains its lead with a ranking point gathering of five. Uh, that's nuts. All right, well, now over to the creator of that ship for some insights into the match. Honestly, this was just an HP disparity to begin with, but Slow Zone did what it did best. It, it found a ship, it ate it, and there just wasn't enough time to distract Slow Zone. Slow Zone's biggest weakness is when it's munching on something, getting hit from the side. That's why I added the side armor. The other ships couldn't even score a kill because Slow Zone just switched from one target to the next. And as soon as something gets into Slow Zone's maw, it's over. Yeah, that's a, yeah, it is indeed. Like, it's pretty terrifying watching these ships fight. Slow Zone again being a terrifying competitor in the arena. And well, when is that ship gonna compete next? By the way, which which what's its next match? Oh, let's take a look here. Um, forty-two it looks like it'll be on the Red Alliance with Manted and Q Anvil Conqueror. All right, well. Wait for that one, because that will be another glorious consumption session if things go the same way. <laughs> All right, back to the game for qualification match what? 39. On I'd the just like to point out that Acquainted one. Foul is officially selling a sh secondary ship insurance for anyone who needs it. <laughs> All right, what were we saying, Duke? Uh, on the Red Alliance, we've got Grenby, Q Anvil Conqueror, and Furnished up against Blue Alliance's Deweest, Gotta Go Fast, and Destardis. All right, well, let's start this thing off. And the Red Blue Alliance clusters together with two of Brad's Brawler ships colliding. Destardis versus Unfurnished. Oh, no. Gotta Go Fast is getting trapped by his own... Ally, but it gets out of there. Just about scraping by, you can see 
not the Sonder there, Shushuji is slowly chipping away at what's his name? And yeah, God, I need to remember ship. And he gets it! Uh, Deweest is f fired its longbows at that ship of Yenyu's and popped it from the backside. This is incredible teamwork on the blue alliance, them all sticking together and acting as good distractions for each other. I honestly do not understand how Gonna Go Fast is still alive. Deweest going in for the snipe. Just about alive though. One of Deweese's main things is that it can survive a long time, surprisingly. It's just getting swatted by you gotta go fast with those big pieces, those big thruster stacks. Yeah, that was kind of incredible. Wow. That was a really good spin match. Yeah. I just find it really funny with them gotta go fast spinning there. It just not swats away the thing. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's take a look at how ranks changed after that match. Blue Alliance all ranked up, everyone getting three ranking points because each member of that alliance destroyed a ship. Excellent teamwork again. Very cool. Now let's get a little more in depth and go over to Kaboom. All right. All right, so here we immediately saw the power of not only good teamwork on the Blue Alliance's part, but also the power of the longbow. It's not to be underestimated compared to antimatter cannons. And we also saw that unstacked ships in the form of Gotta Go Fast are surprisingly survivable in this tournament. They're, they are by no means pushovers. Even Q and Vil Conqueror certainly survived longer than anyone would expect it to, considering the circumstances of being sandwiched between two ships. That was what I thought was most impressive as well, yeah. But yeah, thank you for the insights. Over to the next match, qualification match number 40. Uh, the Red Alliance, we've got the Tinkerel at home, Pharaoh and Doomstar up against Blue Alliance's Runner, the Proton, and Light Thrower. Noticing the Red Alliance has some real high-ranked contestants. Indeed, and that might make this terrifying for the Blue Alliance. Starting us off, Pharaoh running in, but he gets popped immediately. That was a death sentence from the start. And Doomstar is eating that little people there. Wow, that is surprisingly durable. That was a long time for being in that laser. Yeah, how did it survive so long? You can see not a Tinkerel is shooting away. And is that a kill? I don't think that's a kill just yet, but just a matter of time. Ooh, Doomstar almost collapsing foam into the arena border. Foam? <laughs> oh my god! Runner. <laughs> Runner. Just a matter of time before he caught a pool. It's true! <laughs> Yeah, Doomstar is acting a lot like Darkstar, I think at least, chasing after a Kiter without any reserve at all. Gets faster the lighter it gets. But looks like <laughs> looks like Runner is just about still out of range. Continually pelting with its multiple ranges of directional cannons, it's getting remarkably close to the core and almost has taken out one half of Doomstar's thrusters. Now getting behind it looks like Tinkerel at home would like a GGs. word. Tinkerel at home's just come here to look, take a look. Hello, hello. What's going on here? <laughs> uh, Tinkerel, uh, remind you, you do have a uh, weapon battery. <laughs> For gold. Ooh. Foam is attempting to evade all these shots by one, rotating towards them so that it its thinner profile evades the shots and two by also continually to hammer on the same target. Oh, and it gets destroyed after standing still for just one second. Wow, okay, well, there's an error in the destruction log, but there's qualification match 40 for you. And let's go over to Kaboom for some interesting insights. The first thing that I noticed was just how well both sides played out. Each side did their part. There are just a few nitpicks that honestly the AI could have done better. Nothing nothing with the builders went wrong here. On the Red Alliance's side, we have Doomstar tanking hits being a good distraction. We have Tinkerel at home doing incredible amounts of damage. And Pharaoh, for its part, act as, acted as a good distraction. It just had a bad matchup. Then Runner came, came in doing 
probably being the vanguard of the Alliance, dealing the most damage, unfortunately getting hit in the last few seconds by just volume of fire. Eventually, one of those shots was bound to hit. The Proton certainly did its job cutting into a ship. It just cut into the wrong ship. And Light Thrower... Light, uh, Light Thrower did the best that it could. It just, it just slowly died. <laughs> yeah. That against Doomstar is a pretty terrifying Red Alliance. All right, well, the high-ranked competitors probably maintain their rank. Let's see what happens to the ship ranks after this match. And they do. The Red Alliance keeps their rank up higher while the Blue Alliance ranks down mostly. And sadly, Proton stays at the lowest rank. Not a great situation for members of the Blue Alliance. And internally, I am crying because Runner, my baby, almost performed well. <laughs> but yeah, fantastic match. And let's get ready for the next match, which is what? Uh, match number 41. On the Red Alliance, we have Helio, Temple, and Cone Warrior up against Blue Alliance's Trongle, Angry Ants, and VCSD. All right, well, let's get that thing off the ground. The ooh, angry ant moves closer and gets within range of its of the enemy very quickly. Temple making a run through both of Blue Alliance's brawlers. Oh, but looks like Cone Warrior gets a very good shot on both of them. Ooh, good, re that is, good recovery, uh, though, from Angry Ant, but it's taking lots of fire from Helio. And there That's... we go. Red Alliance gone for match end. What were you saying, Salmon? I forgot. I forgot what I was going to say. It's probably something about Helio being good or something. <laughs> and indeed, Helio is pretty good at things, taking out the last ship in that alliance, who very quickly drilled through Cone Warrior. Pretty and you can see crazy. that when those hits connect, it's very dangerous for the enemy. Indeed, and from that match, Cone Warrior moves up to rank 7, and VCSD moves down to rank... Well, Cone Warrior moves up to rank 3, and, Cone War and VCSD moves down to rank 7. I do, I do have to mention one thing that I saw was kind of incredible. Temple literally made the Temple run in between both of those brawlers turning both of them around and cone warrior took all of the prize <laughs> that's true yeah. oh sorry that's no that's go ahead being a distractor it's when you're a distractor you can you can take what you can absolutely save the alliance but then you don't get any of the glory for it so you just got to have the alliance captains so that. yeah there you go and yeah Kaboom, go for, go for what your insights are in this match, because this is a pretty interesting match. Honestly, we just saw... We saw a really well-put-together alliance versus an alliance that you that you think would do well, but just got distracted. The power of distractors is really something else. That's what made this alliance work. Without it, I'm quite sure those, those two brawlers would have done horrible things to Cone Warrior. Yeah. Other true. than that, Helio Helio really does a good job of cleaning up uh, anything that's left, especially with its spread of weapons. I agree with that one as well, right? I just I, that that's an interesting ship right there. You got Joyous, having that ship run through and turn both ships around, and like as other people have said, just you know, just pop being making it easy for Cone Warrior to pop the things. That ship should get some props. Joy should get some real serious props for that for that performance in that match. Ranking isn't everything, folks. Ranking surely isn't anything. everything. This it is isn't true. anything. <laughs> <laughs> Ranking is irrelevant. <laughs> well, at least it is true. It is not completely relevant in with respect to the actual performance of your ship. But yeah, we got qualification match number 42, and who did we have? Boy. As foretold, Slow Zone is back in with the Red Alliance alongside Cumulable Conqueror and Manted. Up against Blue Alliance's Gweebletron Soup, Beamzo Doom, and Gotta Go Fast. Alright, well, let's see how this match plays out. Slow Zone spawning in the back of the Red Alliance. Uh, looks like Gweebletron's getting pulled into the Maw. And that's another ship, Slow Zone. 
Ooh, that's actually wow. quite a lot. We built a Tron drilling very far into the other ship, I interrupted you, sorry. Uh, but all of its like weapons are still online. Weeblatron sweep, look at that damage. That's that could actually be a slow zone kill if some if someone manages to fly in there. Core is almost entirely exposed. Oh so close. Slow zone is still too powerful. And it looks like gotta go fast doesn't really have a shot on this either. Using, go in and kill slow zone. No using Weeblatron's own armor against its ally. <laughs> That's dangerous, man. You can that see was... how much damage Gweeblatron did there to slow zone. That was exceeding damage, yes. Very high, very high damage. That's... <laughs> Dude, okay. Well, maybe, maybe you can talk to us a bit more about that, because that's pretty crazy. Oh yeah, that was, that was for sure a crazy match. Slow zone was meant with a certain damage threshold in mind. Slow zone was meant to fight ships that had considerable DACA not outrageous amounts. It still survived because overkill is underrated when it comes to armor, but if it had the wrong matchup there, if those weren't small ships that it was facing, it very well may have died. Uh, another uh, another heavy ship that could tank armor would definitely cut through what little was left of slow zone. However, something good to note is just how the Alliance partners played in. Good, spawn, good spawning time allowed Slow Zone to take out the biggest threat, almost sacrificing itself in the process. But the other ships were able to successfully distract and keep and keep the Blue Alliance off of Slow Zone long enough for it to consume its meal. That's Slow Zone's biggest weakness. I've said it once, I'll say it again. Once Slow Zone is distracted, it's distracted. That's its most vulnerable time is when it's killing. It's like a chomper from Plants vs. Zombies, I swear to God. <laughs> it eats them and <laughs> it then it's is, distracted. It is. <laughs> and both are equally scary and I think that maintains its ranking score of four is that what it has a ranking score of four like it might be over four it got two kills yeah what's its average destructions per match that's the real question 2.25 now oh man it dude so that means like <laughs> sometimes <laughs> it, it is it is common enough for this ship to destroy the entire enemy alliance for it to <laughs> appear in the ranks. You see that? You see that? That's terrifying. Oh my, oh my goodness. This is... It's played eight matches. It's going to appear two more times. That's... That's ridiculous. It's a whole 10 RPs over second place. <laughs> and that is a hard gap to fill when you're in rank number two. But speaking of rank number two, we got Tinker at home on the blue line, so let's see if it can get five to at least go a little bit closer to Slow Zone's score. All right, shall we get this match off the ground? I think match number 43, Brickatron, Runner, and Unstable Mayfly on the red alliance of against blue alliances, ISI and AS, Tinker at home, and Grand B. Both Tinker at home pseudo Tinker. There. Indeed. Sorry about that. And then, on the blue lines, two ships are very light over here. Ooh, an instant pop on runner. Ooh, uh, that is ex The thing is, uh, like, burst, as we said, the rock, paper, scissors dynamic. Bursty is good against against um, big bags, and especially runner, which is extremely lightly armored. Indeed. Yeah, I find that amount of uh, burst lasers is very unlikely to deal enough damage to kill the brick. But they do have a points advantage. If they can hold out for long enough, then it looks like they might be able to turn this their, their favor. But I'm also spinner is taking some risks. Yeah, and I'm also gonna say that missiles are not a bad weapon for a ship oh. like that. Ooh. Taking some damage. The smart thing to do would be to back back out and then just wait for points because they could hold out for a minute and thirty seconds. But that's bad content. Well, for what it's worth, Reassembly AI is also known for being intelligent. <laughs> it's also known for being extremely stupid. Wait, no, that was Sarkin. <laughs> no, commentator's curse! Okay, we're good. All good. Yeah, Dalreth Liant. Dalreth Liant is evading most of the shots from the brick. Pretty impressive when you're a pretty light ship with lasers like that. I she think it's kind of getting hit quite, quite, quite a bit. It's just as pretty durable. <laughs> I guess that's a better assessment of the situation. Yeah. 
This is some like pretty standard skirmishing behavior considering it's only lasers. seconds left yeah. the brick is still mostly brick shape kind of looks like a state it looks more like a pillar of creation <laughs> yeah dude well, that brick of terran armor is a lot like terran armor is one of the best armors in my opinion and who for a faction like that it's very scary but the blue lines takes the match on points with not many destructions occurring at all Oh, look, Jet, the destruction log's wrong. <laughs> okay. Well, anyway, let's go over to Kaboom for some insights on the match. All right. So, again, we see the rock, paper, scissors dynamic. But interestingly, that spinner has some point defense that really saved it. We also see that just how lethal uh, Big Bang versus Big Bang fights are. They are bloody, they're lethal, and they are over quick. Immediately in the beginning of this match, we saw just, we saw two highly ranked ships do some highly terrible things to each other. And after that, we saw the power of missiles as even the brick, even with Terran armor, even though it did its job, it was starting to get slowly eaten down, given enough People time or- the state of Mississippi. Yeah. <laughs> It, it's, it started doing some funky shapes, man. But it, as, soon as, as soon as another ship comes in with just a little bit more DACA, that may very well have ended the match. We also saw the power of burst lasers as there was a considerable chunk of the brick that got eaten by those burst lasers by the end of the match. Again, given just a little bit more DACA, a little bit more firepower, we may have seen the brick go down which would be a very impressive sight, I think, because that thing is very durable. But that's qualification match number 43. Thank you for the insight, sir. And let's get the next match off the ground. How did everyone rank from that match, by the way? Yeah, Take Girl at Home still maintains a ranking score, well, a ranking, well, a rank of two, having only destroyed one ship in that match. Not, not really enough to get itself any higher, sadly. What's its ranking score, by the way? Uh, which one? Um, uh, Tinkerl at home. Uh, it is a ranking score of 3.0. 3.0, yeah. Okay, so that's going to maintain its current score. I would like to uh, point out Alex's comment here, which I think is really insightful. I like to think that Big Bang 1v1s are a game of manipulating the other ships into a weak position near the arena border where a good antimatter cluster can destroy it in one shot and not just some AI goop. We've definitely seen that. We've definitely seen some AI goofs. I would just like to add on to that, that it's getting it to the arena border is half the battle. The other half the battle is getting it to not dodge or dodge improperly. Scratch damage is something that's not to be over overlooked when it comes to big, big Bang versus Big Bang because they just don't have the health to sustain that. As soon as shields go down, any amount of damage is good damage. I'm going to point out that this is not something that exclusive bang does most small a lot of small ships or bursties like to do this as well i mean i noticed testing my ship that i like to chase other ships into the border and then once they slingshot off the border then it flies in and then just them but obviously it hasn't done this here, as you can tell from the ranking but that aside that is definitely a very insightful thing from lulex definitely a very valid point yeah and i definitely appreciate your insight for bursty because i don't have a lot of experience with bursty <laughs> I have been DM'd to um, advertise reassembly reassembled. Okay, carry on. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, that, there we go. That's qual that was qualification match number 43, and now we're on to 44 with who? We've got Red Alliance with Anti-X, Schlager, and Helio up against Deweest, Cone Warrior, and Instant Regret. All right, well, let's get this one off the ground. Right off the bat, I'd like to mention Cone Warrior is a devastating pick against both of these Big Bang ships. We'll see if Anti-X can distract it, giving the Big Bang ships their chance to shine. Cone Warrior has made a massive gash in some in my DPS. I am going to note that most of the high DPS weapons are getting outranged on Cone Warrior. 
Yeah, that is true. And Cone Warrior can't can't do what it usually does, flying right in. One of the Big Bang ships has died off screen. Oh look, the, it's the escape pod again. Is that a, is that an intentional design thing? Because this is the second time that's happened. Ooh, those Big Bang shots are cutting through the side of Anti X. But if it flies out, it just out of frying pan into the fire and it gets slogged. It got slogged. Oh. Oh, it looks like Wait, Helio's no, taken taking out that, that, another blue sick. ship in the background. That, that, that's Helio. I think it took out uh, Instant Regret. You can see Helio again going after Not Dissonder. I do believe that... Uh, which one was it? But that is a lot of um, reverse thrust on... Schlager, yeah. Schlager was taken out at some point by one of the other Blue Alliance ships. We'll have to see which one it did. Looks like Deweese just pushed <laughs> pushed Helio into some debris. Uh, and Stuck just... in an asteroid field. Oh, this is this is Butt Ship. Get pushed into the border. Or not. This is Butt Ship. This could be devastating for points. Helio's got to get in there quick. And that is exactly what he's doing. Helio firing at the escaping Dweist with multiple weapons from the ba Big Bang faction. It would appear that Dweist has got enough armor and can keep his distance long enough to regenerate. But then I would say Helio also has enough damage to, if it gets in the right position, it can Speaking of position. just eat it apart. Yes, yeah, speaking of position, uh -oh. never mind. I thought that it was going to get trapped in the border between anti X, but then just about managed to scrape by, and it's. Oh! I could win on points. Oh, five seconds! Three, Can I get there? Two, one, and that is time. Whew. Win for the Red Alliance. The Red Alliance takes the match to Weast, almost getting the kill on anti X, but yeah, out. Timed. And yeah, Helio did destroy two ships. They destroyed Instant Regret and Cone Warrior. So, yeah. Who did I... Yeah, okay, the destruction log is all safe. Let's run the update. And then, let's see what happened. From as a result of this match, uh, Schlager ranks up to four. And Cone Warrior ranks down to seven from that. Luex says that he'd listen to an RR advertisement with enough sound effects. Hmm. Download RR, download, download, download RR, do Wait. Down, down. Okay, there we go. So, here's a, here's an important question. So, Schlager has a rank four. Why did it rank up this time? Um, What's its ranking score? It, it ranked Who up because it got Schlager? the win. And I think it actually got a kill, I think. Huh, the match log just doesn't say so. Um, if the match log doesn't say so, then the match log doesn't say so. I, I trust the match log. I think Helio killed Instant Regret. It might have been Schlager. They look very similar. I mean, they're just kind of a ball of light. I mean, yeah. the difference between their appearances is that um, Helio has the shields in like sort of a slightly hexagonal pattern, whereas Schlager is just one massive orb. Yeah, well, um... Oh, yeah, sorry, go, go for it. Um, I was just gonna start on my commentary, and I it. think you were about to announce me. Uh, I was going to point out Exterp, uh, Dweez killed Jogger, and, or, or Schlager, sorry. Um, Thumbs up. And we, we saw a lot of interesting dynamics in this match. First off, we saw that uh, Cone Warrior isn't necessarily the best at brawling. Its, its weapons range is just a little too much. It can deal incredible amounts of damage, especially to the right ship. Medium and light ships have good reason to fear this thing. But heavier ships, unless, unless uh, Cone Warrior gets a good drill in and gets help from its alliance partners to cut off a good portion of the ship, it won't have enough AI range. Uh, something other interesting to note is Deweest uh, is really good at dealing with enemy it seems purpose built actually to deal with enemy big bang ships but is less effective because it doesn't have the splash or the damage to deal with heavier ships as we saw in the last seconds of the match interesting to note that instant regret didn't actually pop some of the smaller ships like it has been previously it might have gotten a bad matchup this time I'm thinking uh, Anti-X really took all of the heat from both of those ships that are good at killing the Big Bangs. 
Yeah, yeah. I'll point I would, out also I would agree. that, sorry. I'll point out also that the Cone Warrior, one, even though it does have a problem with brawling against oversized things, one thing it can do is either leave the job to be done by something else, as we saw, as we've seen here, it could have theoretically, it's made a massive gash that could theoretically have been cleaned up by someone else. Or what it also likes doing is just flying into that core and then just closing the gap. But sometimes that's hard to do, you know. Yeah, and especially with an irregularly shaped shift like Anti X, that that could be a problem for Cone Warrior if we see both those ships in the playoffs. Yeah, well, let's see. Well, I don't know. That's qualification match number forty-five. Thank you all for the insights, and let's move on to qualification match. Or did I say 44? Because it was 44. This is qualification. Now we're on 45. <laughs> we sure are. And who do we got? In the, uh, in the Red Alliance, we've got Volatica, uh, the Proton, and Familiar Memories. Yeah. Up against Blue Alliance's More Hate Than Blood, Light Thrower, and Gamma Ray. None of, these of ships seem to the be, um, none of these ships seem to be ranked too high, to be honest. Well, Gamma Ray is 17, somehow. Well, yeah, apart from that. Let's... Down fighting for the scraps. All these low ring ships may have going similar in to get performance. Killed. Multiple high killed, damage per second Ooh, laser ships. And Velasco's gone. Look at that PD going off. Familiar memories has been erased. Winner is still alive. It's Velasco. gonna be a quick match with this few amount of HP. Yeah. And there we go. One ship left in the match. That's qualification match number 45. Light Thrower destroying a ship. Familiar Memories destroying a ship. More Hate Than Blood destroying a ship. Familiar Memories destroying another ship. And Gamma Ray destroying the last one. Now that is quite the destruction heavy match. Well, let's see. Let's see some more insights from Kaboom. What have you got for us? So this was a quick match because there was just no HP on either side. Interesting things to note are that Light Thrower and Gamma Ray are really good at cleaning up small ships, but, but there was a lot of missiles on the enemy team and that absolutely melted, even with point defense, two of the Blue Alliance's ships. Adequate PD is going to probably be necessary as missiles are turning into really a really good weapon they're good against big ships they're good against small ships they they're very versatile and honestly broad breath may be finding its own niche in the meta yeah that's that's an interesting piece of insight i have also noticed that missiles are pretty good at doing it what they do this time around. But yeah, that's qualification match number 45. Thank you for the insight. Let's move on to 46. And who do we got? On the uh, Red Alliance, we've got Deton Milan, Angry Ants, and Pharaoh up against Blue Alliance's VCSD, Interesting, and Destartes. All right, let's get this match off the ground, noting that the Blue Alliance has some higher ranked competitors on it. Two big, big bang versus big bang. Yes. Angry and... Wow. Okay. Just start. Just gets a kill. Pharaoh is out. And you can see Angry Ant there is kind of trying to chip away at the VCSD there. But there's a lot of armor on there, so that would take. The Tom Milan is in a very tricky spot, but it gets a kill on the starters. Oh man, good teamwork here. Both, both of the Red Alliance cleaning straight through VCSD. Now it looks uh, like But the Tom Milan is backwards. Let's see this. Interesting the and angry. In, and, and angry ant are fighting each other now. MFW the ant is angry. <laughs> you don't want to see me when I'm angry. That's a trick, I'm always angry. Both ships bouncing off the arena border, almost destroying each other multiple times. There's a lot of dodging happening here. Angry Ant hitting a block of material in the way. Ooh. This is flying away. 
Anything. Close the distance, Agriant coming in. Could that be the kill? Maybe not. Kills and strafing happening, but it looks... Things are looking up for Angriant because it's a points victory right now. But it would appear know. that the Ant is the better strafing ship. Seems so, but the other one's also putting up quite a lot, quite a lot of fight. So uh -oh. Interesting. Change targets. Now with a distraction Ooh. on both sides here, I wonder who yeah, will maybe. come out on top. Interesting gets distracted here. Then oh, spell death. Oh, it's so close. Interesting, just still managing to dodge out. Incredibly close. Oh, but it's come back for more. Interesting definitely has the capability to, to turn this match around, but it doesn't seem to have enough time. And and shooting <laughs> from behind the death. The still losing on points. Still losing on points. Wow. Yeah, interesting. Hey. Getting a good kill there, but angry ant. Well, showing that it can survive for longer and strafe a little better in this case without it actually while scoring one kill. Very cool. That's qualification match number 46. Let's run an update and uh, <coughs> excuse me. See the results of that match. Destartes ranks down to rank number six, still in a picking position, but only rank six now. VCSD moves down to rank 10 as well. Interesting, all the way down to rank 28, sadly. While the Blue Alliance ranks up just a touch, with Angry Ant ranking up a bit more because of its destruction into 10 Milan as well. All right, and that's 46 for you. Now let's take a look at some insights from that match. So we saw the Datan Milan doing an incredible job of distracting. That it was really clutch. We also saw, uh, I believe it was interesting. The uh, it's it's either that or VCSD Mark II, the the Big Bang ship. We saw that doing a really good job against Angry Ant, which is something that we haven't seen very much of. Angry Ant has a good weapons complement that fires at irregular intervals, which means it's really good at getting that scratch damage that I was talking about off. That's why it lost on points. However, it, it did a good job surviving, and considering it was the only alliance partner by the end of it, it performed admirably. The two brawlers definitely did a good job, but again, those irregular shapes from Detan Milan and ships like it are really proving to throw ships off. Maybe the reassembly AI doesn't understand it. Maybe it's that they're just thick. Cool, yeah. That is some interesting stuff, sir. And qualification match number 46. Thank you for the insights. Let's move on to 47. Who have we got? On the Red Alliance, we've got Hellfire, Barracuda, Doomstar and Cone Warrior up against Blue Alliance's Temple, Furnished, and Gwibletron Soup. I'm looking at the Red Alliance and noticing that they've got a, a large number of single digit ranked competitors. Yeah, which noticing that as well. A little scary for the Blue Alliance, but they do also have Furnished, ranked number eight. Let's see if ranks show <laughs> what's gonna happen in the match. Let's go. Blue Alliance charging in with Unfurnished. Both Brawlers tied up in a 1v1 at the moment. We'll see the how has Hellfire... This time, though, so yeah. yeah, it did. For the smaller ships like this, Cone Warrior is an absolute menace. Temple doesn't seem to be taking so nicely, though. Ouch. Shame. Huge damage oh, from those lasers. Oh, the... <gasps> What this is this is take out Gwibletron. Yeah, as expected. And now that is a wrapped up match. Noting that uh someone got destroyed here on how did Cone Warrior get destroyed? That's right, Gwibletron took uh, out Cone Warrior. Probably Hellfire. Hellfire probably killed it. Oh, that's on the I same. I maybe recommend you Oh, sorry. <laughs> uh, I'd maybe recommend you try not to zoom so far in. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff going on. It's hard to it's hard to pick, but a lot of things happen off screen. That's true. Yeah. <coughs> I try to get into those fun bites, but yeah, I'll try to keep my camera zoomed out a touch more. But looking at what happened in the in the ranks, ooh, a huge upset indeed. 
Hellfire Barracuda is now at rank 8, taking Yen Yu's spot at, who is now at rank 12, and the Blue Alliance moves down in rank, notably. The Red Alliance is very dangerous indeed. It is, in, it is indeed a stacked team, as Sloking says. So yeah, super cool. Now let's go over to the place for some insights. Here we saw, we saw what can only be really described as a slaughter. Everything, it, this was a perfect matchup in every way. Hellfire Barracuda was perfectly suited to take to take out Gwibletron Soup. Furnish just had a really bad matchup against uh, Cone Warrior, and Doomstar did horrible, horrible things to Temple. This was really a show off of just how powerful these ships are, and in conjunction, they're really scary. It's a good thing they can't be in an alliance together. Yeah. Hmm. Well, there we go. That is that is an interesting point that the captains cannot choose each other in the alliance picks. So that that's that's a really a uh, you know a very important thing to remember when doing this. Okay. Well, that right there is qualification match number forty-seven. Now let's check forty-eight and see what fun stuff happens in this match. And who have we got? On the Red Alliance, we've got Q Anvil Conqueror, Light Thrower, and Instant Regret up against oh no. Blue, Slow oh Zone, no. Runner, and More Hate Than Blood. All oh right. No. Glorious. Well, we've got Slow Zone and Runner. I hope I can serve you well, Kaboo. Uh, let's try and see what happens in this match. Oops, wrong button. I, I'd just like to point out the HP disparity. That's all I'm going to say. Um, okay. Oh. <laughs> Indeed. Slow zone's about to, he's about to slow all over their zones, that's what I was saying. More blood than hate is got a oh, strange, uh... No. Oh. <laughs> yeah, can't say I wasn't expecting that to happen. Did Jen you then... steal my kill? <laughs> slow zone's slowing all over their, sl slowing all over their zones and runner is running all over them. That's a lot of hate. Yeah. More than blood. Hate. Oh wow. <laughs> More hate than I have blood. You can Yikes. see hatred in this ship. It's so angry. Did Slow Zone get the kill, or did, uh, or did More Hate Than Blood get two? More Hate Than Blood got a couple kills there. It, it yeah. definitely stole one from Slow Zone. It came in with a broadside. Honestly, I have the points to spare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, More Hate Than Blood destroyed two ships, but Slow Which... Zone destroyed one. Yeah, Slow Zone did its classic Slow Zone thing, but More Hate Than Blood is really good against small ships. It can chase them down. It's a good anti-kiter. Honestly, if it ever makes it uh, out of the rankings, that is definitely a ship that I am considering for my alliance. But no, it, it didn't go down. J uh, <laughs> it, it's, it's not going to go down. Uh, I'm 10 points ahead of the next best. Yeah, it it. it. Slow Zone is it, absolutely not going, not getting out of first place anytime soon. See, that's where you're wrong. Helio is gonna come out of nowhere and take it from you. No, no, no. You, what you would expect less is um our beloved uh 30th place Velatica is going to swoop this up in the next round. Yeah, let's let's see that happen. Velatica versus Slow Zone. <laughs> yeah. Mm, amazing matchup, absolutely amazing matchup. <laughs> I, just, I just need to summon all of my salmon powers. <laughs> all right, well, thank you for the insights and qualification match number 48. And now let's move on to 49. Keep in mind that our last qualification match is what number, actually? I don't remember. 59. We are within the final stretch. All right, well, almost there. And now, who have we got in qualification match number 49? On the Red Alliance, we've got ISI and AS, Proton, and Beams O Doom up against Blue Alliance's VCSD, Anti X, and Velatica. Oh, I'm not liking the positioning that mm, Velatica is going to fly in and get killed. Or not? I think that not. Velatica does. <laughs> <laughs> bursty I was faction. expecting good things this match. <laughs> the, the Bursty faction always does well oh! against lighter targets, and you know what? Bursty ships <laughs> are also fairly light targets, and so Bursty faction versus Bursty faction. Ouch. 
Oh, uh, the non spinner. Way. Does it get away from that? Better than performed. Pain. Smell your pain, bro. You can taste it in the air. The earth trembled. <laughs> the Proton's got a lot of DPS, and the VCSD is distracted. Getting good shots in through the side, though. Who will get there first? Two thruster spikes taken off of VCSD, and a large portion of the ship is sliced. And the oh, goes. I think the kill steal. Indeed. And the X is the final boss. And that is a very difficult ship to do high damage against, especially when you don't have much splash damage. Yeah, I just think, I don't think guys on AS has enough uh, DPS to get through. We'll see if it's yeah. Skirmisher keeps it alive in Skirmishing nature. Oh. Does, if Anti-X has any of those characteristic big bang, not big bang, uh, broad, Brad's Brawler's immobilizers, then the match is over, but it looks like the match is already over. There we go. Beams of Doom, Anti-X, Iznaz, Anti-X, and Anti-X all get kills in this match. Whew. And it looks like Anti-X destroyed all members of the other alliance with a ranking score of five. Nice job, Lucifer. Good ship. Anti-X is a pretty terrifying ship, despite slightly low, lower ranking compared to how good I think the ship is. It's, it's quite a... Yeah, I think it's definitely one of the better brawlers in our list up. And do I see Velatica ranking up one score? Oh, Velatica squeak, baby! <laughs> and TX see, also ranks up. Sorry, what was that slogan? My favorite. I called you slow, my so favorite. oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> your personality has become your shit. <laughs> I have become <laughs> Slow Zone, the destroyer of ships. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, anyway, over to you for some more analysis. Yeah, okay, so here we we saw an interesting insight that I would like to point out from the chat is laser versus lasers come down to just minor differences in HP. The anti-brawler that we saw could not deal with anti-X because I swear it's that weird shape. That it, that weird shape is honestly what's throwing off most of these ships. Having guns in different places is a really good design. That way, if one gun gets taken out, you, you can still fire against softer targets. For what it's worth, uh, VSD Mark II did a surprisingly good job as a distraction for the other ships. Maybe that would be a good alliance pick if uh, alliance captains are looking for distractors. Yeah. Sump asks, is VCSD a new guy? It's like Cookie Creeper, is that is that a new guy or someone using a new... Uh, Cookie Creeper oh, Cookie before. Creeper's been around, yeah. Wasn't their first ship a literal creeper-shaped ship? I think it was, am yeah. I, am I crazy? <laughs> That's definitely happened. I wasn't. It would be weird if Cookie Creeper wasn't the person who subbed that. <laughs> Alright, well, there we go. That's qualification match number 49. Thank you for the insights, Kaboom. And now, let's move on to our next match, which is... Uh, match number 50. On the red alliance, we've got Deton Milan, Deweest, Tinkerel at home... Up against Blue Alliance's Interesting, Hellfire Barracuda, and Trongle. Alright, let's get this match off the ground. Starting us off, the Blue Alliance moves closer towards the enemy alliance with the Tan Milan out in front. Trongle versus the Tan Milan. Trongle's got a great angle going right through the Death Star port. Yeah. Tinkerlet Big bangs, home. couple of skirmishes going on. Wow, there's not much left of Deweest. It's gone. Destroyed by numerous amounts of splash damage from everywhere. And now I'm looking at these two Big Bang ships dueling it out with their antimatters. Looks like Interesting is going to take out Tinkerlet home over the course of the rest of the match. Yeah. 
That's also Will there be a kill steal? We Tinkwa, and we have already established that Tinkwa at home is a very powerful unit. Tinkwa at home is regenerating, though. Yeah. Despite its uncapped thrusters that we do. Well, despite it being uncapped, despite it being barely stacked, it's it's a really good ship. There's, Think there's... about how scary this thing would be if it was capped. Yeah, uh, I feel like we had a, we had some mentions about that in VC. What, what was your insight on that, Slow King? Uh, because I, I want to hear that. But anyway, it looks like all three members of the Blue Alliance are sticking together as good Alliance team members. That is what you want to see, I think. Trongle just behind other members, backing them up right in shape. case Yay. anything anything intense comes their way. Budget I wonder cut. if... Uh, Interesting. That's I wonder if Hellfire is having some uh, corruption regeneration problems. That, that could be very possible, considering that it's careening out of control. Sorry, this isn't my time to talk. <laughs> no problem. Oh, good. It doesn't seem to be oh. regenerating very quickly, at the very least. Ooh, big hits. Big hits out of Trongle and from Interesting. But it's still alive. Ten seconds. I think it may survive. All three members Just of barely. the Blue Alliance coming in from other angles, but not really going anywhere. Looks like the match win but is on That point. is surprising. All right, well, that's qualification match number 50. And let's see if that ranking that ranking score... Well, that... What? Who is that? Tinkerl at home with their ranking score of... Well, with their rank of two can be maintained, because that might be fairly... Difficult. Let's run the update. I guess it's not too surprising though, because I believe Tinkerl at Home was the longest standing ship that had not died. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Well, anyway, yeah, um, let's go over to you for the stats. One moment. For, for more information on what happened during this match. All right, go for it. I was so scared. All right, so immediately we see two decently composed teams. It was just kind of that rock, paper, scissors. Uh, Trongle, I believe, deserves a higher ranking score just because it's really good at doing exactly what it just did. It It's really good at killing especially irregular shaped ships, but really any kind of tank. It's a tank buster, and it's not something to be trifled with. Uh, interesting is really a good ship. I feel it's underrated because it's it's really good in Tinkerl Brawls. But we could say also it's quite uh, interesting. Yeah, it, that's. Uh, I would also say <sighs> that Tinkerl at home is just a really good ship that survived way longer than it had any right to, and. DWE, DW East did a number, well, it was mostly Tinkerl at home, but DW, DW East did a number on Hellfire Barracuda. If it had lasted just a little bit longer, it could have taken a kill. Yeah, well, it does look like, despite its destruction and lack of kills, it maintains a ranking score, well, a ranking, a ranking, a rank of two, which is very impressive, and again, Nice job to Slow King for making a good ship. All right, well, that's qualification match number 50. Thank you for the insights, folks, and let's go on to 51. And who have we got? On uh, the Red Alliance, we have Temple, Manted, and Brickator up against Blue Alliance's Destardus, Schlager, and Pharaoh. All right, let's get it Lots going. Lots of high ranks. Indeed, right? And both alliances inch towards each other slowly with Schlugger um, getting some hits off on the Red Alliance early. Ooh, this leaves Temple with a backside on Destardus, though. Will it take Pharaoh advantage? Pharaoh's trying to take out the brick there, but it's so oh my distraction for Destardus to just rip through it. Destardus is turning the whole of the brick. <laughs> the power of those crystal thrusters in is unmatched as as Pharaoh moves in and grabs the core. Bursty Faction versus Brad's Ball Brawlers finishing the match with destruction by the Blue Alliance. Wow. I remember Schlugger this whole time. Schlugger just came in at the end like, oh, hey guys, how I've just been Schlugger... sitting here eating Doritos. <laughs> Schlugger was dealing with Mantid off screen. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> maybe, maybe Schlugger and um, 
Pharaoh, because Pharaoh wasn't there for a while either. Yeah, maybe, maybe it bribed them. According to the match vlog, the kill did go to Schlager. Mm. And now we need to find a state of America that the brick got turned into. <laughs> but yeah, right, right now, look at. I'll take a look at what happened in the ranks. Mantid is now rank 9, moving down from a picking position, sadly. But Destartes ranks up to 6. Schlager stays at rank 4. Pharaoh is up to rank 18. And yeah, that's how qualification match number 51 goes for both alliances. Very quick and fairly good teamwork as well. I very much appreciate the fact that a Brad's Brawler ship with Core Hole, Sentinel Core Hole, was destroyed by a Burst Laser ship. Which is not... Not the expectation. So there you <laughs> Yeah. Oh, cool. Did I ever. I did go to this. I did go to Yukaboom, right? No, you did not, but. Oopsie, I, 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 I will. I, 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 I know what's gonna happen. <laughs> Luke says that the. Luke says that Brickator got turned into New Orleans. Yeah. Honestly, Brickator is. Brickator does a good job as a distraction. It's just not quite enough on the health pool, I think. If it had been distracted for just a little longer, or if there had been a little more Daka on that alliance, we would have seen some kills. That, I have to highlight that bursty kill. That bursty kill is truly godlike. That's that's something you don't see every match. That's not something you see every DRT. Uh, Schlager doing Schlager things to Mantid is just a bad matchup, unfortunately, for Mantid. If Mantid had come for the other two members of that fleet, it would have gotten some kills. But that's just not how it went down. That's what we like to call schlogging in the biz. Hey guys, I didn't find it off camera. Mantid died. <laughs> get, get schlogged. We like to say get schlogged in these situations. You got schlogged. Don't don't schlog with me. That's what they say, and, and that's where they say where I come from. <laughs> oh. All right. Well, schlog I was raised in Schlogville. The people in Schlogville were all very schloggy. If you was from where I was from, you'd be schlogging dead. <laughs> no, 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 no. If, you, if you were schlogged where I was schlog, schlogged. <laughs> if you was schlogged where I was schlogged, you would be schlogged. Schlog gaming. <laughs> do you know what schlogger is? Okay, do you have? Do I have any idea all where right. to start with you? Are you going to get schlogged? If you was schlogging where I was schlogging? We need to call it down. <laughs> Let's move on to qualification match number, what is it, 52? 52, 52. In the Red Alliance, we've got Gamma Ray, Grenby, and Agri Ant up against Blue Alliance's Familiar Memories, Helio, and Furnished. All right, well, let's get qualification match number 52 off the ground. <laughs> Oop, failure. And then... Okay, starting us off, Red Alliance trying to shoot at the Blue Alliance with the breath. See Angry Ant there. We're chasing him into the into the arena border. That could be a kill, because that's usually the space, the kind of position that you want to be in in a Big Bang versus Big Bang situation. Gamma Ray being Gamma Ray down there. Gamma Ray got a couple of good gashes into that ship of Yenyu's, but it's hard to do good damage against a ship with that much danger bearing down on you, especially with that reset yep. core. And especially with lasers, which aren't exactly the best in this context. Hey, lasers do drill pretty fast. I, I I think they're a pretty capable weapon, but it's dangerous against a ship with splash, against your super ultra stack stuff, as well as just... Oh my goodness, so much stuff is going on. Oh! Oh, the lasers. Oh, so close. Gamma Ray? Oh, yeah. I think that was... Gamma Ray got the kill. Furnish was kind of holding the alliance together. It was looking very evenly matched up until that point. Yeah, Gamma Ray did get that kill against Furnished. Very cool kill on Brad's Brawlers. And currently we have some Big Bang ships dueling with their directional cannons once more. Ooh, if Helio gets too close to Gamma Ray though, it's lights out. That's a good it point. Like Helio has got an advantage on Angry Ant here. Still two Ground. versus three ships. And what's the note on the shields on your ship, Duke Slayer? Uh, all of them have to go down before the ship can die. I wanted to point that out because it looked like almost all shields were down at some point. Ooh! Ooh. And a close-in kill by Duke Slayer with only one shield up by the end of that. 
And that's what you want to see in a Big Bang versus Big Bang oh. situation. You want to push him into the border, so and then it, it's especially for him. Helio needs to has keep his distance. Plans. This arena bounce. I'm lagging a bit right now. Will there be another kill in the last 10 seconds? Let's see. Looking like your blue team. Ooh, it's gonna be close. Gamma Ray Turns just about armor. out. Come on, just three more seconds. And... Yeah, winning points. Blue Alliance takes the match on points indeed, with one chip remaining on your alliance, and that chip is titled Gamma Ray. All right, very cool. That's qualification match number 52. Let's take a look at how that affected our ranks before checking out the cool stats. Looking at what happened here, Helio moves up to rank number eight in a picking position. Congratulations, Duke Slayer. And oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> This is unexpected. <laughs> Three ranking points in that match. And what's what's our what's the ranking score of, of your ship right now? Uh let's see. Rank eight. Helio is sitting at a ranking score of 2.0. It is tied with VCSD, but I think it is ahead due to more survival? Uh maybe it's destructions per matches. It's ahead a couple points. Which yeah. one does it default to when they're tied? When they're tied? Um, it defaults to the one with more destructions, yeah. Destruction yeah, okay, one. so destructions is uh, 0.89 for Helio and 0.67 for VCSD. Hmm. All right, well. Oops. That's Definitely cool. gonna have some toss-ups for these last uh, picking slots. Indeed, that's gonna be a difficult set of decisions. And let's go over to Kaboom for some potential insight on how one would make those decisions. Yeah, so Gamma Ray, I wish, was a little more aggressive. Um, it could have won this and swept if it was a little more aggressive, but enough about Gamma Ray. All of these ships are good picks. None of these, there's, there isn't a good, there isn't a bad pick here. Familiar Memories is really good for splash damage. Helio is, uh, it, there's a reason why it's an Alliance Captain right now. It's just a good ship, especially for fighting stuff like Angry Ant, which it, it proved itself and has proved itself time and again. Angry Ant still isn't a bad pick, though. Angry Ant is a really good bursty ship, or not bursty. Big Bang. Bursty. Big Bang ship. And if, if things had gone just a little bit differently, there were several times where Helio was down to its last shield. Um... The, the last thing to really note is Green Bee is a little bit underranked. It it can definitely it definitely has its purpose. It just it just did not have a good matchup in this case. It it survived longer than it should have for certain. Um, I'd also like to touch on Furnished. Furnished is a really good brawler, and I'm genuinely surprised that I was able to kill it with Gamma Ray. Gamma Ray, I thought, would have just retreated, but apparently Gamma, Gamma Ray, when pursued, is behaves the way I want it to and kills things. I think there was a lot of distracting in terms of that, uh, the Furnished v uh, Gamma Ray fight. Yeah, Noticing that's true. that this also means that Helio and Tinker at home won't be able to be in the same alliance. Which is a shame, because I remember how well those... No! Were they were we'll best together. There's still a few matches to go, and the the lower matchups are really close. Yeah, it's okay. I'll just uh, do poorly in my last match, and we'll be good. Yeah. Deliberately throwing. <laughs> Depends on who faces slow zone. <laughs> Indeed. And... What... Uh, well, th thank you all for the insights on match number 52, because now it's time to move on to 53. And who do we have this time? On the Red Alliance, we've got Gotta Go Fast, Doomstar, and Trungle up against Unstable Mayfly, Anti-X, and Deweast. All right. Well, let's get qualification match number whatever, 53 off the ground. Starting us off, Gotta Go Fast moves over to the Blue Alliance's side, getting hit by Dweist. It's Unstable Mayfly going in to attack Ooh, Trongle. Big pile up. Not as much significant damage as Who is the better go. side shooter? Looks like Trongle is sustained heavy injuries. 
but it's also true. Yeah, it's like looking like these really crystal cool. weapons are gonna strike true. Eventually, yes, and that is Trungle out. My goodness, <laughs> there's some chaos <laughs> in the back ranks. Fast. Schlogger it's firing, or it may fly at me. Um, That's not Schlogger. <laughs> may fly, fly, firing from the firing to the back of Doomstar, almost getting some shots off there before it gets distracted on Anti X. Also trying to take out the Ooh. other ship. Gotta go fast. We gotta go fast. He's going fast. You're too slow. God. Makes it even worse. We have Sonic as playing in the background as well. Ooh, there it uh, goes. <laughs> And um, it looks like uh, Doomstar is stuck on Anti X. This is looking like a bad matchup. Ouch, yeah. Blue takes it. Complete swing. Swing? S clean sweep. Runny Babbit. Yeah, well. <laughs> Qualific that's, that's, that's qualification match number 53. A win on destruction on the part of the Blue Alliance with no deaths on that alliance. Very nice. Let's take a look at the at some insights from that match. Go ahead, Kaboom. All right. So we we saw a lot of HP in this match. Um, there were three big ships, and Antiex really proved itself taking hits from two sides. That was... That was pretty incredible. It acted as a great distraction for its uh, for its alliance partners, and we also saw just how good Unstable Man Mayfly and uh, Dewey Star at just killing distracted ships. I'm honestly worried for Slow Zone because both of those are really good picks that are up for grabs. You're worried about Slow Zone. You're, you I'm seem always to be worried about Slow Zone. Yeah, no, I have anxiety. <laughs> yeah. But what slow zone has is power. This is true. This is power. I'm gonna comment that 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 situation that Doomstar was in is a similar situation to one that slow zone might find itself in if it tries to fart, fight fight a heavy target, and that Which... is indeed important to recognize. Go ahead. Well, slow zone has had one death so far. That one death has been to Yen Yu. That one death was because Slow Zone was stuck on a brick, was eating the brick, and got killed by a ship that had a lot of DACA. Can't blame it. The brick looks really tasty. R brick does look tasty. I'm well, gonna be real. People are eating it and turning it into Mississippi. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone wants a bite from that brick. Yeah, well. It's uh... usually on the Red Alliance. It's this nice, tasty meat brick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And on the blue, on the blue alliance, it's a blue raspberry ice. Ooh, I love that. My favorite. Yeah, it's one of those stupid ones that turns your tongue blue. Indeed, yeah. And <laughs> it's time. Well, yeah. Thank you guys for the insight on qual match, qual match number fifty-three. Let's move on to qual match number what? Fifty-four. On the red alliance, we've got Mented, Dooms O Doom, and Light Thrower up against Temple, Interesting, and More Hate Than Blood. All right. That's crap. I forgot the number. What was it? It was 50. This is uh, 54. 54. All right. Yeah, I'm also going to comment on. I forgot to comment on the, the ranking changes from that match. Uh, Doomstar ranks down to 5, but that's still a pretty good position. Anti X is also at rank 8. Would you look at that? It's now a captain. I and can't choose it now. That's a, <laughs> it's a dilemma, isn't it? Yeah, no. I mean, everyone wants Anti X. And so, Helio and Anti X are tied at a 2.0 for ranking score. Ooh. You said destructions per match was the decider, but Anti-X has less destructions than Helio. Uh-oh. Wait a I guess I don't mean destructions for match. It was wins on destruction. Wins on destruction. Wait a second, yeah. Um, ah. says that they can take me. Helio is up for grabs again. Yes, Helio is up for grabs again. <laughs> Anything can happen in these last few matches. It's a, it's a devilish fight for these ranking spots. Including Velatica number one. <laughs> Good luck. Indeed. Ray. Its ranking score has a lot of ones in it. 1.11. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that, that actually means I'm going to be... 
I'm going to be rank one. I'm going to be rank one. That's what they all stand for. Dude, good, good point. It does say that in rule subsection 8.3. So, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it's also written in the holy bimble. Exactly. Mm. <laughs> and this is what? What is your what, what, number? 54. 54. <laughs> it's on the screen as well. Well, let's just go for it before I lose more brain power. Okay, and now the red alliance all moves in at a faster rate than the blue alliance, with Imperiax moving to the backside of the blue alliance, distracting two ships. Oh, light thrower is out. Mantid here going in with a massive stream of or hate the blood. It's just turned about. around, splashed. Temple, a bursty flying in ship. It's that beams of doom. Yes, it is. And the doom jo dodging past those, those um. Antimatter's there. Very scary. But this is a very good situation for it to be in because that is the right kind of target when you're a bursty faction ship with obliterators, which have a longer range than most other weapons in that faction. Turned this around. This is definitely a good matchup. But then also, you've got to notice that. Oh! Ooh, never mind. I was about to say. Sigmund. Interesting, definitely taking quite a few shots from the obliterator before going down but inevitably is fell by the obliterator if anyone heard my echo going off and luckily i don't think we did but looking at what's Here happening you. in this match uh the ziggurat nope it's not the ziggurat it's the temple is turned around again while the, the other ship circles here. around Slowly reassembling its weapons. It's doing the Velatica thing. It's flying around. Now when it, it goes uh, around, yeah, it's looking to go. <laughs> slowly reassembling, but it would be a loss in points if it kept doing that for too long. So it's got to close in. Ooh, maybe it's been getting the perfect angle. And yes, that's some mediocre damage there. Oh, and, yeah. Mm -hmm. Vaporized. And simply, right. the weapon velocity was too fast for the ship to get destroyed quickly. But you know what Good happened in that you. match? Temple destroyed all three ships on the Red Alliance. Congrats, Temple, for getting ranking score of five. Nice job. All right. Wow, Temple was in 34th. That is surprising that ship is so low. Yeah, Temple now ranked 31 and Beams of Doom moving to take its previous spot even though it also got a kill in that match. Oh, would you look at that? One second, while I ain't edit the scores here. Uh, Kaboom, why don't you take a look at the match and tell us what was interesting about it. Yeah, of course. So we saw Mantid get a great matchup to start with. Uh, Yen Yu's ship just isn't survivable and there was a lot of Daka coming in there. We also saw Temple have a field day and the temple is meant to do exactly what it did it's meant to brawl against medium to light ships it's meant to distract and it did both of those things excellently we also saw beams o doom come in and get an excellent kill doing exactly what it's meant to do against a ship that should be ranked higher than it than it is seeing Seeing that happen was honestly a good fight. This was a fun match to watch. Yeah, well, and speaking of this match, I just edited the match log so that Beams of Doom it did in fact get its kill on Interesting, which is what happened during the match. And let's take a look. Oh no. Uh, this button. Let's take a look at the how, how the rankings did change and actually they're accurate this time. If it will update, it looks like that was actually correct, right? Yeah, it was. Beams of Doom stays at ranking of, 50, of 34. All the other ships move themselves around. All right, well, thanks for the insights on 54. Let's move on to, nope, not that's the wrong button. There, okay. <laughs> Sorry about this. What's our next match contain? All right, uh, match 55. On the Red Alliance, we've got Runner, Vladica, and Wibletron Soup up against Angry Ant, Destartas, and Helio. Will Helio make 8th place? 
Will Velatica make first place? Will Velatica ask kill the real Kilio. questions? <laughs> ask the real questions. I mean, on the same alliance as Runner, so let's just hope Runner can carry my ass. This is an interesting point here because Helio and Angry Ant are a commentator battle. <laughs> this is a commentator battle. Sam King says, "Please, Helio, stay nice." <laughs> you know, <laughs> like I am interested in this match because Velatica has. You know, it's the burst. It's the burst laser ship against two ships that are very easy, well, at least easier than most to kill with burst lasers. So let's yeah. see what happens in this match. Starting us off, Angry Ant firing at Weeblytron quickly, ejecting its core oh right goodness. into the Startus. Velatica, don't do that. Velatica destroying a ship on the Blue Alliance. Angry Ant. Wait, it did? Destroyed. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, do I need to un do I do I need to re reown my child then? Uh, don't be so hasty. No, I'm, I'm still disappointed in you. Your disappointment, your disappointment to your fun. Yeah. Whew, getting destroyed Disapp by Distartes. I'm, I'm placing my bets on you for... No, no, no. Oh. <laughs> placing my bets on Runner there. See, we Helio really needs love, to take really care of Runner. This house. Yeah. Oh, boy. Foam's got a bad matchup. <laughs> now we're all calling it Foam. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. that. Nah, can we rename I it that in the spreadsheet? No. <laughs> I'm looking at yeah, runners. It's just here. foam. This is, this is foam in our hearts. Foam, foam is... at home. Foam at home. Exactly. <laughs> but yeah, looking at what's happening here, runner is trying its best to shoot stuff. Oh, it's, it almost got into the clutches of the starters. Will foam be able to take it out quickly? Helio's playing All a right. decent vanguard here, mm. keeping Runner Honest, busy. Honestly, we're seeing some good uh, partnership between these two alliances. Uh, between Helio, these two alliances. Please lose. I want to see you fight with Tinkerer at home. Runner's losing its first shield. Note that the shields are quote shock mounted, which should make it so they don't. They're not integral to the structure of the ship. Oh. But then Helio takes it out with its final blast. Damn it. That means it's an alliance captain again. Probably. It gets a ranking score of four, destroying two ships on the enemy alliance. Ooh. Well, there we go. That's qualification match number 55. Let's take a look a little more in depth at what happened during this match. All right. So we just immediately saw some massive destruction. Angry Ant doing horrible things. What it's known for. Foam melting Angry Ant. And then we saw the vanguard of this alliance, was, uh, Vladica. Helio, just... Vladica melted the angry ant. Oh, Vladica got angry ant? Yeah, I, pretty... I'm, I'm sorry, I didn't see that. Vladica got mm. its kill, I forgot uh, about I'm that. Smell I'm smelling Vladica slander here. I'm, I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah, it smells I was like just slander. expecting Vladica to rack it, rock it up to number one, my bad. Yeah, no, no. All we need to do is all we need to do is take one look at it and be like, oh, that's a sexy ship. This number one. All right. Um. So yeah, we we saw Helio, the star of the show here, just come in and take out Runner, which that's that's what it's meant to do. That's what it's really good at doing. That's why it's ranked so highly. That's why it's an alliance captain now. It's it's good at dealing with other big bang ships, and that is a rarity. Yeah, I'm gonna add to that and say that Helio, with its cannon fire in a spread, Duke, you mentioned something about that, right? Could you go into that a little more? Um, yeah, I decided pretty early on that I wanted to add a couple different cannons to my Big Bang ship to add different velocities and projectiles. The The spread is also very handy, I, I find. I would have done more railguns, but I found that the ship performed a lot better against Big Bang ships when it had the HC-3s. It's that scratch damage, just slowly but surely taking down shields before they can regenerate, and after that, there's no health behind a Big Bang ship. I can't help but notice that the ship that I specifically designed to be fun to watch is not being fun to watch. No, a lot of it's oh, fun just because a good you time. make it. It's fun because it dies. It's fun if it's fun because it dies and then. Like, Whoa! <laughs> it's fun because now it's become a running joke, and that is why it's fun. <laughs> I guess. And that is not there bad. Is, Remember, Desonder won one way. Yeah. Okay, honestly, honestly, Desonder won 
was one of the worst ships. It was ranked the lowest in the DRT that it appeared in. It was picked for an alliance and destroyed only Tinkrel and one red, and then it lost everything else. The legacy of Dissonder grew with time. And that is Wait, how, did, how, how did why did he make a second Dissonder then? Was it to atone for the sins of the first? Because it did absolutely wipe out two like alliances, like like or just an alliance worth of Tinkrel. It just popped them both without any reserve. That is how Dissonder got its name. That is what we like to call a Dissonder moments. Alright, I, I like this. Just... We just gotta look forward to the Velatica 2 sweep. Ooh! <laughs> I would like to just mention that the uh, the alliance captains are definitely starting to cement. Many of the competitors are at their final match, ten matches played. Very few have nine remaining, and of those, it would appear that five of them are in reach of that eighth alliance captain slot. Mm, yeah, Anything can happen. Anything can happen. It is far too early to call, especially those lower rank spots, but we might even see an up upset with some of the higher rank slots. Yeah, right. And that, that's that's what's that's the thing here, right? Again, ranking ranking the rank of ships is determined by the average ranking points you get per match called the ranking score. And you know, at the end of this all, it's hard to change your ranking score because you've done so many matches already. But yeah, the the more matches you do, the harder it is. But we we're seeing a lot of close matches. Indeed, it's really a testament to all the builders of this tournament that we've made ships that are really on another level. <laughs> Indeed, I'm gonna have to agree with that. All these ships are very, very good. They're just it's 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 fun to watch these fights. I'll just, that's just obvious, I think. But yeah. Well, that was 56. No, it wasn't. It was 55. Let's watch 56. Thank you guys for the insight on match number 55. But yeah, match 56 has who in it? On the Red Alliance, we've got Tan Milan, Cumulable Conqueror, and Hellfire Barracuda. Up against Blue Alliance's Doomstar, Brickator, and Familiar Memories. All right, let's get this going. Note that Hellfire Barracuda and Doomstar are in picking positions. Yeah, this looks like a playoffs fleet. It does kind of, doesn't it? That's funny. But yeah, starting us off, two high health broad breath ships on the blue alliance target to Tan Milan before one gets distracted on Qnville Conqueror. The missiles from Hellfire are really not finding too much per purchase on the brick at this point. I'm noticing the Desert Melon is having a rough time trying to eat through the brick, but it's slowly making its way in. That's a pretty big gash. And Doomstar is doing its thing there. Cuneville Conqueror is lasting far longer than it has any right to. <laughs> missiles to the backside of Doomstar. I think the Ditto Melon might might get the no it's not right. Oh just turns. It might overturn though. Oh it's busy now with the other Red Alliance ship. Ooh, the other yeah. Red Alliance ship is dead. Hellfire well, is indeed in a good position to get a good score on the backside of Doomstar. And it looks like it's trying to do precisely that. Oh, switches targets. Will the remaining missiles get there? No. That's familiar Memories like is... Familiar Memories is just doing decent DACA from the sidelines. If its missile spread was a little tighter, it would... Oh. I honestly wasn't really expecting that many people to be using HM1s, because I remember in my, when I first used them, I think that I just kind of didn't use them again. So I didn't really account for that. I didn't put too much media on my stuff. Now notice yeah. this, the brick Ooh. is in, the, in a good position now to strike the core of the enemy because Familiar Memories rotated the Tanmelon to the right orientation. Look at that. Hellfire is getting more. good shots in though. <clears throat> That's true. Both Look weapons at that. are out of range. Hellfire takes the kill on the brick. And Doomstar is fully regenerated at this point. Tanmelon is not looking in a good position. 
those yeah. lasers go down, it's over, but... It looks like the brick got turned into the state of Florida. Oh, was that time? That was a win on... This... No, that was a win on time. There was time. Yeah. I thought a missile somehow killed it. Yeah. I wasn't looking at the time. Everything was so close. Well, there you go. That was two kills by Doomstar. Uh, that's a ranking score of four that it just received. And, uh, yeah, went on points. Well, let's take a look at how people ranked in that match. Hellfire Barracuda moving down to rank number eight, while Doomstar ranks up to rank number three. And now... Yeah. Uh, yeah, over to you, Kaboom, for some more insights. Sorry if I'm being overeager. Um, <laughs> Go for it, it's fine. This is a great lesson in why you should bring PD on your big ships. Both... All three of the big ships just had terrible times with the missiles in this match. Qnville Conqueror did significant damage to Doomstar, which is rank three now. Can't underestimate the power of missiles. Uh, Doomstar did an excellent job regenerating. Brick got overall killed by missiles. And at the end of the day, while uh, Detelamelon did did die to lit the lasers from Doomstar, it was in large part the missiles that just did enough scratch damage got, got it to rotate around because missile kiters are really good at getting ships to do that. You, you really can't underestimate these missiles. I think they're more powerful than, we, than we've previously been giving them credit for. Yeah, well, that's, in, that's interesting. I agree with that. The missiles are quite scary so far in this tournament. But yeah, thanks for the insights on qualification match number 56. And now we're on to 57, which is two away from 59, correct? That is correct. Slow Zone is preparing Boy. its victory lap in match number 57. We have Slow Zone, Cone Warrior, and Pharaoh oh, no. up against oh. Grenby, Instant Regret, oh, and oh, the no. Proton. Oof, this one's gonna... This is... Hmm. Who can I... get the most kills? <laughs> <laughs> slow all over my zone until I deal. We're gonna be moving a little bit close to slow zone, but staying out of range of its immobilizers until this happens, in which it gets grabbed instantly alongside slow instant regret. Zoned and slow zoned. Oh wait, what's this? Gone. Was this? Slow, 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 what? <gasps> slow zone died. I told you, whenever it gets distracted, especially by a ship that a ship like that. Did Slow Zone get a kill? Yeah. The Slow simply wasn't in the zone this time. <laughs> Devastating. I think Slow Zone got two for kills. a victory lap, but still a win. Wait, so who got the Red Zone? Alliance? Uh, uh, that was. Uh, I think that was. Brain. Proton. Yeah, Proton. Proton. The Proton. Wow. It's funny because like that's the lowest rank getting the highest ranked. <laughs> See, ranking isn't everything, folks. Perfectly balanced <laughs> as all things should be. Honestly, watching that match, I've I've been warning you guys about slow zone for a long time. Any ship that has good DACA while slow zone's distracted is gonna be lethal. But I think slow zone got two kills there, so it kind of made up for it, which is pretty depressing. <laughs> slow um, zoned and slow zoned. Yeah, that. And then we saw just the power of Cone Warrior burning through ships. It, it it's, it's something you gotta be really careful about when you watch. Yeah, note that according to this match log, Slowzone didn't actually score any kills directly. That was Cone oh, Warrior wow. who actually scored it. Wait, wait, seriously? Yeah. That's that's really cool. Slowzone is still easily first, but. Yeah. Definitely a good lesson in that slow zone is not infallible, guys. This is why I worry for her. <laughs> nice. <laughs> this 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 match was just a figment of our imagination. <laughs> Wake up. Slow zone just won DRRT, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, would you look at that? Slow zone stale stays at rank one, Cone Warrior moves up to rank number three. Pharaoh moves up to rank number 14, and all the red alliance, all the blue alliance, I mean, move down in ranks, including Proton, who sadly can't go any lower. But there we go. That's qualification match number 57, right? Yeah, 57. 
and thank you guys for the insights as we move on to number 58 who have we got uh the red alliance we have got to go fast furnished and tinkerel at home up against blues gamma ray isinas and schlogger again we're looking like some we're looking like uh playoffs fleets they are aren't they <coughs> This is funny, but yeah, let's, let's let's see what happens in qualification Important match. Important rounds for Furnished and ISINAS. This is their only chance on getting into the top eight. Tinker at home firing off at Schlogger, but ooh, Tinker at home and Schlogger trade there. And now Infamous Yen Yu chases after Slow Zone, not Slow Zone, <laughs> Gamma Ray. Uh, you can see whilst um, I swear it's not a spinner is going off against Gotta Go Fast and been bursted. With both blue line ships in close proximity to each other with their lasers, this could be an interesting distraction battle with we the Red We have seen Furnish die to Gamma Ray in a previous match. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. It was pretty precisely this setup to a distraction and Gamma Ray. And Gamma Ray drills in from the side and it's GG's. I'm liking the movement in this match. Both ships on the blue alliance are doing a good job sticking right next to each other at a similar engagement range. And that is causing that when one ship decides to skirmish out of there, the other one is right there to help out. And that I think is good alliance composition, but the AI trigger was just destroyed Ooh, on that one. Unfurnished is not a spinner slow when he gets way over. Uh oh. Looks like Yen Yu's behind and it's going for the spinner. It's letting Gamma Ray regen. The not a spirit spinner is surprisingly durable. Yeah, it's got a lot of shields and stacked armor. Now what I'm noticing is that the condensers on infamous Yen Yu are spread firing. That usually does lower their effectiveness but does make it easier to hit something. Yeah, you get less drilling power, but Yet, more damage. The burst is still dodging them pretty well. But it looks like uh, Gamma Ray is now getting itself back into the fight as the camera switches over to it. Or not. No. Where's Gamma Ray being? Just chilling. Uh, I wonder if the AI little... trigger on Gamma Ray never regens. It does, it's just way, way too slow. I did the AI trigger really wrong. Oh. Uh, but it has regened all of its hull by now, I can guarantee you, which means that Yen Yu is going to have a tough fight burning through all that armor. Yeah, looking like a victory for the Blue Alliance. Points. On points. Well, yeah. Unfurnished definitely put in a good show. Will it be enough to reach the top eight? Did Gamma Ray kill Tinkroll at home or did uh, Slogger? Gamma Ray, uh, Gamma Ray killed Tinkerel at home, yes. Wait, I thought that was yep. Schlogger. I thought Tinkerel at home and Schlogger. Gamma Ray oh. stole it. That's a match right. That's a match schedule failure. I forgot. All right, so apparently there is a running issue with the sketch, with the, with the match checker thing, where if two ships destroy each other, it doesn't count them very well. So I'll edit that real quick as you guys talk about this, uh, what happened during the match. Uh, okay, so... We saw just some really good alliance partnering, and if Gamma Ray was just a little bit better, which never going to cease to annoy me, if Gamma Ray was just a little bit better, they would have eked out the win. Uh, they were doing some excellent teamwork while uh, the AI trigger was not popped, and as soon as it was, the synergy fell, and it just went. But Gamma Ray is a very, very survivable ship. Um, it's... It's, it lives way longer than it has any right to. If you want to win on points, which is exactly what we saw here, that's what you do with Gamma Ray. Schlager, Schlager did Schlager things. It performed admirably. And ISNAS, it, it is a really good alliance partner, especially with other ships of the kind. Furnished... Furnished is just good. It's it's a good ship. It survives longer than it has any right to. It goes faster, way faster than it should. It's really good as an anti-kiter. And Tinkerel at home, 
it just got bad spawn positioning. It very easily could have done some serious damage in this uh, setup. Gotta go oh, fast. Some, some, sorry. Uh, I was just gonna mention that gotta go fast had those deadly, deadly HM1s, but there were just enough. There was just enough point defense on the enemy fleet to negate that. Important to know when picking alliance partners is that you have to have PD. As soon as you do, you shut down anyone who brings HM1s to the fight. Yeah. That's the enchant. Tinker at home left at number two. This is gonna start Sloking's tragic backstory. <laughs> this is back with sl I was always playing second fiddle to Sloking. Everyone forgot about me. That was how I became the Sloker. <laughs> well, speaking That's of the, the Sloker's rank, tragic backstory. Yeah, there you go. There's your ranks. Look at that. It did indeed leave that position. It's down to rank three. Still pretty high. You, uh, right, again. As we move closer to the final qualification match, note how picking works. The top eight ships are going to become alliance captains. Then, each one of them will choose a ship to join their alliance from the top to the bottom, right? So that's rank number one, chooses first, then number two, three, four, five, etc. Down to rank number eight, who then picks another, and then we go back up the size. So the important thing to note is that ranking one is very good because you get to pick the best ship. You get to pick the. Sh you have free reign to pick whatever ship you want that isn't in the top eight to join your alliance, so that you have the potential to make the best alliance. Well, at least the best. Pick the best two ships. In but your all, alliance. But it's also important to note that you get the very last pick, so you get the top of the barrel and the bottom of the barrel. It keeps things balanced and it makes rank eight particularly powerful. I found in last DRRT because you get to choose two ships. You get to effectively choose with some minor caveats you get to choose your alliance immediately and that's very powerful it's not to be underestimated and i think the rank eight spot is the most desirable yeah that's an interesting piece of insight that i kind of am inclined to agree with you there note that in frc you can actually pick the other captains which is kind of funny but anyway i'm getting off topic but it's time to do the final qualification match let me get let me get the right the some appropriate music in this joint. Um, Ooh, what are we gonna play? Well, of course, <laughs> Last Stand by Ben Prunty. Ooh, that's a good choice. Excellent <laughs> choice. All right, <laughs> who've we got in our final <laughs> qualification match? Of note, uh, only two ships remain for ranking points. The rest of them are surrogates. So in rank 59, we have on the Red Alliance, Unstable Mayfly, Manted and Trongle up against VCSD, Q Anvil, Conqueror, and Light Thrower. So Unstable and VCSD are the ships to be looking for. So a note on surrogates. Surrogate ships do not get ranking points. Ever, anything that they participate in, you know, they, they don't actually get any ranking points. Because they're surrogates. The schedule at the very... St when I generate the schedule, some ships will be declared surrogates by the algorithm so that all ships get to play the number of matches, right? All ships get to play 10 matches, no matter what. And the surrogates make sure that every ship gets to play that many matches and no ship goes without goes without their, their last two. But yeah, everyone who isn't Unstable Mayfly in BCSD, they will participate in the match, but they will not get any points or ranking score or anything from it they can kill your steals or steal your kills <laughs> they can do that um okay that, that's the biggest consideration i might have to edit the sheet to make sure that surrogates are actually calculated correctly we'll find out soon all right well let's get this off the ground the very final qualification match and uh yeah Pressing the delete this button. And Mad now, I believe, uh, Ooh, Mayfly shot. Wow. Shot. wow, okay. Quick it's start to thing. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't even have anything to say here because so much death just occurred in the first second here. 
look, my overlay is not having a good day. But Ooh, um, VCSD might get this kill on Mantid. Yeah, Mantid doesn't seem Ooh, to be having a very pot. good day. But Trongle could close in. Oh, the escape pod. Oh, it's Trongle time. Oh, it's just right there. Okay. And there it goes. Triangle the now triangles. Series. Fight of the triangles. Let's see these two heavyweights duke it out. One the massively oversized Dorito versus Bug Plug. VCSD is doing pretty well here. I believe it is ranked close to eighth place. It is in tenth. Depending on its performance here, we might see an upset. Hmm. Yeah, Trongle now currently trying to turn towards the enemy so it can charge in with its fast, relatively fast, amount of thrusters. It, uh, <laughs> the humor is not lost on me that, uh, PCSD is a butt ship. <laughs> oh, god, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's about, it's about plug. <sighs> the, the, the most incredible shape of all time. The reverse trapper, as some like to call it. Uh, and, well, everyone's favorite uh, Dorito circles around the rank number 10 ship, looking to see if it can get in there and score itself zero ranking points. <laughs> They're just dancing to last stand. Aw, oh, yeah. Can't blame him, that one's a banger. Fun fact, Doritos come in pepperoni pizza flavor. <laughs> An incredible final match to the qualification rounds. I'm very, I think this is quite funny because look at that, the Blue Alliance is gonna lose this match on points. VCSD is gonna get two ranking points though because it destroyed two ships during that match. Pretty good performance. But yeah. That's it, that's the final qualification match. So let's just take a look at how all the stats, uh, you know, do their thing. Hey, look at that, they do actually rank. So this is, these ranks are actually inaccurate because everyone who is a surrogate should not be giving, should not be being ranked right now. One moment, we'll fix that in the background, but it doesn't look like any of that affects our top ranked things because they're all in the lower ranks right yep uh none of the top eight were jostled all right well we'll fix that soon and we'll post the ranks in the schedule but would you look at that that was the final qualification match why don't we take a look at some insights from that match while we wallow in that victory yeah honestly we we saw unstable mayfly kill and be killed we we saw vcsd get some serious kills off and we saw trongle have its one big weakness and that is it it just can't quite maneuver i love the shape of trongle it's such a unique design but sometimes it's a hindrance hindrance <laughs> Yeah, and yeah, well, interesting. And those are all important considerations for you captains out there who, I guess we should read them off, shall we? Thank you for the insights, Kaboom, as we go into the final, oh my goodness, everything's appearing on stream. As we go into our final thing. So, God's qualification match number 59. As you can see, we're at the very bottom of the qualifications directory. Now, who, who, who's our captains, Duke? All right, in first place we have Slow Zone with an astounding 3.7 ranking score. Second Oof. place, uh, we have a three-way, four-way tie for ranking points. But um, Cone Warrior, followed by Tinkerel at Home, Doomstar, and Schlager. Cone Warrior? Where's Tinkerel at Home? There it is. Tinkerel at Home. You said Doomstar? 
Gis, Doomstar, and Schlager. Doomstar. And then in sixth place is Distardus with a 2.3. Distardus, Mark 5. Helio. Stumped. Absolutely stumped as to how it's pronounced. Seventh. That. Helio in seventh with a 2.2. And Hellfire Barracuda in eighth with a 2.1. All right. Well, there we have it. That is the result of the of the 2023 Summer DRT qualifications. One half of the tournament has been declared as over. And now, and now. It is time to begin the alliance picks. Kaboom will go first, then Splinter, then Tinkerel at home, which currently doesn't have a name in it, which is alarming. That's okay. Then Doomstar, Luix, Bluefish, Duke, Lucifer, etc. Just as the rules declare. I'm very- I do have some questions. Oh, yeah, go for it. Um, looking at the like four-way tie could you explain how those are decided how the order is decided four-way tie let's see here i'm gonna switch my um oops the four-way tie is between tinkerel at home doomstar schlager and Distardus. or wait a minute nope i missed cone that warrior. Uh, cone warrior uh cone warrior in second tinkerel at home at third doomstar at fourth and schlager at fifth Hmm, so how does that <clears throat> ranking work right there? So Cone Warrior, Tinkle at Home, Doomstar, uh, Schlager, those are all at the same ranking score, but they have different, they have diff some different parameters here. So what am I sorting on? I am actually sorting on destructions for match first, it looks like, and then I sort based on the DPLS score. And then I think I sort on just the order there is submitted, because if you make a ship faster, and it does better, I think that's kind of cooler. In accordance with the rules, I thought that looked a little strange. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. I'm I'm annoyed that I got it got that wrong. Well, we've Schlager added some more uh, points. statistics for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, Doomstar that moves up to rank two. Uh, Tone Schlager. Warrior goes down to four, and Tinkerel at home goes down to fifth. Yep, the, so how it works is uh, Doomstar has the most survivals, or let's see, Doomstar has tied for the most destruction wins. It has tied for the most point wins. So then it would be Sumple submitted before Schlocker. Hmm. Sumple submitted before Luke's. Sample submitted. Check the ships tab. That will give you exactly what you need. I don't have access to the ships tab. Oh, wonderful. Uh. And ships. So Sample. Sample Crumb submitted at the 11th spot and 13th spot. And who's who's the person after him? Uh, it's Doomstar, Schlager, Cone Warrior, and Tinkerel at home. So yeah, Cone Warrior, Tinkerel at home are coming way later in this in this category here. So uh, yeah, that's how it should work. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, it looks good. Cool. All right. I'm sorry for faking out some people on the order of everything, but those are our final ranks. And um right? No they're not, because we have to do the have to do the recalc on the other thing. Um yeah. Also Light Thrower has apparently played twelve mat or yeah. Oh nope, yeah, nope, that's just eleven. Those are the um surrogates. Yep. I'm gonna have the to surrogates have eleven. Yep. In data entry I'll have to change this. So who are surrogates once more? Uh, did... Light Thrower and Qinvul Conqueror. Oh, also on, also Manted and 
I think that that I think that's it because that's four ships, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's four ships. Cool. All right. Well, that should be it. Does this thing deal with unique things there? No, it doesn't. Okay, good. I think that. I think that's it then. Already. Let me move. Let me add our rankings to a little DSK scene. This will just take a second. Oops. I, I'm almost going to add myself another camera of myself. Almost. <laughs> we're going to go to browser and we're going to go ranks. Or rands, apparently. It's going to be. Long, large enough. This is going to take just a second. I should have gotten this done earlier. Then we're going to go 1,000 wide. And then like... Then maybe like 1080 tall. That does in fact get everything. Now we're just going to crop this a little bit nicer. Okay, and then, oops, a little DSK appeared on stream. That's cool. Let's head back into this scene. And then let's add ourselves, or if we go into studio mode, we go over here to scene number two. We center this thing in the scenes. This is just gonna take a second, I say for the third time. Um, center to screen. Should we have a, a live alliance pick? <laughs> I'm thinking. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about it right now. I'm determining what my first pick is going to be. Composition that I have in mind. I really want to. I'm sorry. Dumb. That's okay. Don't worry, Velatica can have its chance against Slow Zone. You can dethrone the Slow Zone. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't think I want to try that. Uh, I've got, I've got my bets on another lines. Wait, that's, that's how fair. come Runner is twenty second? I thought Runner was an Alliance captain. Runner was an Alliance captain for a long time, but then it just started getting killed left and right. Yeah, Mantid was an Alliance captain for a long like, time. You, you look at Runner, it's lo it's died in half of its matches. It was Damn. rough. I mean, I'm looking at my my survival rate, a glorious zero <laughs> percent. Yeah, yeah, we have a couple of those. This was this was a very bloody DRRT. It was so fun to watch. And yeah, no one no one got away unscathed. Hmm. Well, yeah, apart from Slow Zone, almost. No, Slow Zone died twice. Yeah, it, but I mean, it, like, still wins. Those, the, all of the matches where it died were wins, so I, I still count those. That's true. That's kind of true. So in a way, Slow Zone never really lost. Yeah, well, Slow Zone. Slow Zone does have the highest in all of the stats, doesn't it? It it yeah. has the highest ranking score by 1.2, a whopping 1.2. Highest total RPs at 37, which is 10 over the competition, which is ridiculous. It's It's got the most uh, destructions, uh, zero points wins, which is terrifying. It's I think it has actually sustained a loss, and it's got eight survivals on it, which... I'll have you know, pretty Helio has more point wins. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> Survival rate I mean, of would... Slow Zone is 80%, and the destructions per match is a whopping 1.9. After yeah. it got killed, kill stole several times, it's still almost two kills a match. That's... that's rough. This is really shaping out to be quite the enemy ship. It's like, this... Yeah, I don't, this I is wasn't the final there boss. when Darkstar was... I wasn't there when Darkstar was in DRRT, but I imagine it was a similar deal. Yeah, I can, I can certainly imagine that too. I wasn't there either. It would be really funny if a runner was also an alliance captain, because then every one of you here would be an alliance captain. Ah, <laughs> eh, well, it's not how it turned out, but um, yeah. No, I'm placing all of my hopes and dreams on Malatica too. 
Fair enough. Velatica 2, Electric Boogaloo. Yeah. All right. Um... Let me let me freaking look here, cause this is hmm. Hard selections there are here. Two sh there are two ships that I really want, and I'm not sure if either one of them will stay if I pick one. Ah. Uh, uh, well, those are some questions that we'll have to answer. For all of you captains, right? Again, just I'm, making sure that we have said this. The the captains are Kaboom, Sumplecrum, Luix, Splinter, uh, Sloke, Bluefish, Duke Slayer, and Lucifer. Those are all of our captains. And so, yeah. With um, with two eyes closed, I am going to make my pick. I Ooh. am picking Furnished by Infamous Yenyu. All right. Oops. Wrong button. Ooh, that's a spicy pick. Our yeah, first that... pick has already been made. And who is that? Unfurnished? Fur furnished? No. Nope. Furnished. Furnished. Oh, guys, DRRT starting soon. Furnished by Infamous Yen Yu. It has a ranking score of 1.7, 17 points. Uh, it's got a record of four destructions. One of them with slow zone. Uh, let's see. Uh one points win uh then it's five and five for losses and survivals it's it's a good ship i've seen it work and i am putting my confidence that between slow zone and furnished that terrible things are going to happen to ships yeah well that's quite a spicy first pick and now i see from chat sample crumb is choosing his as well uh, this reminds me of the first robotics competition. All right, VCSD. Mark two. And that joins Doomstar. Cool, all right. Okay. Big brawlers yeah. up at the top. Good pick, Sample Crumb. Good pick. I'd also see if anyone there wants to have like a custom. Who's screen. third? I want to see if, if we can if we can really do this. I think Lux is in chat. Yeah, Luex is in chat. <laughs> That's ALX 555. Yo, Fal, you're no, on no FRC? No pressure. <laughs> you don't have to pick right now if you don't want to. You don't have to, but we, hey, we no, got no, no, some Pick for Lassica, pick for Lassica. Come on, come on, come on. We're like best friend. Do it for me. <laughs> we agreed on this. Salmon's down bad. <laughs> I'm so excited for my second pick. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Like, there is a really pick, good you're, ship. You're gonna commit Ah, uh, yeah. Well, hey, would you, Foul, by the way, this is indeed. Like, you, know, you know that I straight up copied and pasted the FRC format for this, so here's your robotics competition again. <laughs> but yeah. Ooh, two two alliances already being formed. Uh, by the way, if if uh, if I haven't said it already, any of you may choose a different color scheme for your alliance if you so choose, if you'd like. Also, yeah, if you if you, if you want like a custom on your next next ship's up screen, DM me. I can draw one for you. Uh and we can put I'd it like that. <laughs> do, do you want me to just put a circle on that? <laughs> if you want. Yeah, because I'm I'm gonna be, have to be in, wait. Hi, I thought that was Duke speaking. I could put like a T-shirt on that because that's what that's what slow zone looks like. Just kidding. <laughs> it's just because gonna I'm, have I'm to gonna be have to write. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna have to write custom text for all of the um all of the things anyway. So because like you can't say red lines, blue lines, you know. So. Mm -hmm. um, so oh God! Well, we I forgot. Have... Helios got really off-putting colors. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it looks really cool. It's like it's like one of it's like one of those um lobster punches things okay um i'm sure i picked their ship gosh dang it i switched to all scenes um technically they don't have a say in it but <laughs> i mean they don't but they used to have a nice say in it by an alliance captain kind of <laughs> yeah back in the day you could if you were almost you, you won you could pick captains 
And two, uh, you could say that you don't want to be picked. And then if you become a captain, then you can pick your own stuff. Which is interesting. But also, like, harder. <laughs> so I'm going to be real. Slow zone is not meant to fight with um, its sister ship. I made two very different ships because I knew that they couldn't work together. Yeah, I definitely well. sent in a sandbag ship before. A ship that's only there to help the one I want win, win harder. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it would also be convenient if people made like custom alliance names because it's like, you know, like Dark's Doom Stars Alliance is a pretty long name. Hellfire well, Barracuda's Alliance would be a massive mouth. I mean, I'll give you my custom name as soon as I get my second pick. <laughs> yeah. Anti X was a beautiful ship. Um, let's show it off. It, I was seriously considering picking Anti X. That was my really hard choice. Was between Anti X and uh, unfurnished. Un and furnished. I keep saying unfurnished. Yeah, it's so easy to say unfurnished with furnished. That right there is Anti X. It's it's a beautiful ship. It really works well. It's really good. I I really wanted to pick it. It's a good so ship. So far, I've picked and Sumple Crumb is picked. First and second place have picked. <clears throat> the third person to pick is uh, Luke's. After that is Splinter, then Slow King. Also note that there's a ship that wasn't, that I didn't let in. I think I said this at the very start of the stream. A ship that I forgot to let into the tournament. That is up for picks by skill. This is called a, a, a rectangular block of hard material used for building walls and houses. And uh, you may add it to your alliance if you pick it. Again, so you know. something that I'm considering, but that's for the second pick for me. Yeah. <laughs> what has been the picked? first pick? Ooh, I should add, I should begin <clears throat> working on the... Uh, the Alliance Picks sheet, which is now ready for action. So, there's a sheet in the, the, the DRT sheet thing, right? Yep. It has a tab in it titled Alliance Picks, which shows exactly who's next. So, Slow Zone, who do you pick exactly? That was, um... I picked uh, Infamous Yen Yu's Furnished. And, uh... I believe... Simple picks, yeah. BCSD. Simple crumb picked. Yeah. Furnished. And... Wow, I... Salmon is using it? blackmail. I will do it. I will do it. <laughs> and I'll kill He's the He's bluffing. Too. He's bluffing. And I'll kidnap your villagers. He's bluffing. Hey, wait, Why, hey, what wait, reason hey, wait, do hey, I have wait. to bluff? I have ranks wrong. Oops. Oopsies. Oopsies. Ranks are wrong? I have the ranking formula wrong. One second. Four, five, six, seven, eight. Why is this wrong? Ranks two, three, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Why is furnished over here, but in the ranks tab, it's not there. That's awesome. Um, why? That's a simple one. There it is. I just had to refresh the page. Love Google Sheets. Okay. I know, right? <laughs> I felt that on a spiritual level, man. <laughs> it's got that sword function. I love that sword function, but... So jank. So jank. <laughs> Loves everyone to see this. All right, Doomstar and Doomstar, who'd they pick? Uh, BCSD. BCSD. Let me uh, let me change my my scene to something more familiar. Yeah. All right. BCSD. BCSD. MK2. Schlager. And did anyone get a pick for Schlager yet? Or are we going to have to pause up the stream and wait for the true time? Well, wait wait for the playoffs to see what happens. 
I think it's about time we, we, we close things off here. So, um, okay. We're on the picking spot for number three at the, as, as we end the day two of the qualifications. And I just want to say that it's been great so far. I have absolutely loved every single ship here. They're all so much fun to watch. They all are so powerful and, and, and explosive and, and dangerous. And every single fight is dynamic and interesting and doesn't come down to just bullshit most of the time. And that's just so awesome. And I just thank you all for submitting to the 2023 Summer DRT. And I hope that in the playoffs, I'll see you there. That's on the 14th and at the same start time as day two.